The Earth's gravity was much less, so that uh, uh, huge animals like uh, the dinosaurs, the, the megafauna, and also megaflora could uh, flourish. In today's circumstances, uh, even if they were able to uh, reconstitute a, a dinosaur, it, it wouldn't survive because of its weight. Right. So it wouldn't be able to, wouldn't be able to lift itself onto its feet without breaking every bone in its body. <laughs> That's if it had the strength in present gravity. And this is something that's very strange. When they first discovered the um, skeletons of dinosaurs, they decided they had to be waders. In other words, the buoyancy of water had to support them. But they forgot this idea after a while. Now, sort of, uh, I think in um, Jurassic Park, they had uh, brontosaurs uh, browsing on um, uh, trees with their forelegs in the, you know, up on the trunk of the tree or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, there's no way. <laughs> It's just impossible. But this is uh, ignored. It's quite strange. So um, that was the kind of environment where you will find life so and it, it will be abundant. Now, the problem is, of course, that you're now orbiting inside a plasma sheath, a glowing plasma sheath, and radio waves can't penetrate. So, And also you cannot see the stars. All you have is this uh, purplish glow because you also get a lot of ultraviolet light at the same time. The consequence is the purple dawn of creation, the legendary purple dawn of creation. Hmm. That was the kind of light that the uh, uh, Earth existed in. Red light is uh, uh, essential for photosynthesis, and we had that in abundance. Um, we had a heavier atmosphere. We had lower gravity. Everything was ideal for that uh, period, long period of megafauna and megaflora. Um, now, if you can't get radio waves through this, uh, this cocoon of warmth, this glowing cocoon, uh, and you can't see the stars, you'd have no reason to think that by building a transmitter of any sort that uh, you would have anyone to communicate with. Mm. So there's no incentive to try and communicate <laughs> with the universe, so to speak. Because, because you the don't universe, know it's out there, in a way. You don't know it's out there. Huh. Yes. And uh, so this is the problem we face. If we want to communicate, we will have to be at uh, some almost what you might call spiritual level, not not uh, by using radio waves. Hmm. But, but so what you're saying as well here then is that the conditions that we that life came onto this planet were, were different than they are today. <laughs> Again, we're back to this idea of of the of the event, and we might even tie this in together with the extinction extinction event of uh, the dinosaurs yes. as well. Then that that at this yes. time, when when we became uh, a part of of the bigger solar system, and the we became um, part of the the, the G class uh, star, uh, our sun, and, mm -hmm. and, you, and you're saying you suspect then that life would not uh, arise out of the current circumstances that we now have on Earth. No. Is that correct? No, it's a very um, precarious existence that we have now. There's a, just a small region um, uh, in terms of orbit's distance from, or the sun, Earth's distance from the sun, and uh, we need to be able to um, have a rotating Earth which presents um, uh, different parts of the Earth to the sun at uh, regular intervals, and the axial tilt not to be too drastic, otherwise life would be very difficult. Uh, and it could change at any time. That's not to say that the environment uh, in uh, orbiting a brown dwarf is all that much fun either, <laughs> because uh, brown dwarfs are notable for their flaring. They don't have the same inbuilt uh, mechanism of the photosphere to deal with changes in their electrical environment. So their response to changes in electrical environment is to flare and to eject material into space, so all of the bodies in uh, the solar system show signs of um, layering, uh, you know, geological strata, and uh, they're laid down in these periods when the uh, star flares, you get all sorts of material dumped on the Earth, and some of the big dyings in the uh, record of, or geological record of the Earth uh, would have probably been brought about by these uh, outbursts of our sun. That's that's incredible. So, so if we if we put it this way, then the circumstances that we've now ended up in are very potentially then 
very rare and and it might not be the yes. only s scenario in in the entire universe obviously there might be other uh places that this has happened as well uh on but in that sense we have the unique perspective now <laughs> then if you will that we have uh, uh life has been created on on under those circumstances that, that you described with the with the purple dawn of creation in that sense but now we're also in a position where we finally then can see the stars out there and, and for whatever reason it seems like we've been led this path albeit you know uh I don't know how to how to round that off, but it's, <laughs> it's an, if I can put it this way, it's an interesting uh, circumstance that we ended up in. Uh, at, at least, it's it's a very interesting accident, if if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's right, and uh, from my point of view, that gives us uh, a responsibility because, in my view, the uh, the whole universe learns when something is learned by us. Uh, the universe learns. It's like um, it's means of uh, feedback, if you like. We're the eyes and, and must, the ears of, of yeah, the creation. Yeah. And so we're in a we're in a privileged position to uh, be able to see uh, the greater universe. And I don't think this happens all that often. It gives us a kind of a, more of a perspective on our uh, what we're here for, if you like. And I believe that uh, life is uh, is to be lived to learn as much as possible because. That information isn't lost. The universe seems to have some means of um, storing that information. The very fact of uh, being able to build creatures to fit in some kind of uh, amazing symbiotic relationship, uh, given any kind of uh, circumstance like the um, bacteria at the um, ocean floor mm. uh, living at uh, in, above boiling temperatures, the very fact that life can exist under those circumstances shows that uh, there is that information is available somewhere in the universe, and uh, it's found the environment there where it works, and so that's where we find that life. Huh. Wow. Well, that's that's a really interesting and fascinating uh, um, food for food for thought, as it were, and I, and mm. I think that's a great place as well, Walt, to begin to round things up here for this time. And I can't thank you enough for your time and and for your. Uh, dedication to the subject matter and the research that you've done. I think it's fascinating and uh, uh, and obviously there's so much more to say and we kind of just brushed on, on all the different areas, not maybe even, mm. maybe even all, but many of the different areas that you and um, your colleagues over at Thunderbolts are, are um, researching and, and, and talking about. And uh, w why don't you end things for us again then by mentioning your, your websites again for people who want to check out more of your material and how they would, uh, would get a copy of, of your book and your DVDs as well. Okay. Yes, my website is holoscience.com, H-O-L-O science.com. <clears throat> my colleagues uh, operate a website called thunderbolts.info, and uh, that is the one that has uh, forums and other means of uh, getting involved, together with information about how to obtain our uh, books and DVDs and uh, links to research papers and so on. Uh, we even have peer-reviewed material which is uh, a fair achievement when you don't have any peers. Absolutely. Uh, again, we will have these uh, website linked up on redaskrations.com as well, so you can uh, click through from our site uh, easily and get to uh, Wall and um, David Talbot's uh, material and so forth as well. But with that, thank you so much for your time, uh, Wall. It's been really interesting, and we'd love to have you back at some point as well. Stay with us. Uh, I'll have a quick chat with you off the line. But again, thank you so much for your time, and keep up the great work, Wall. Thanks, Andrew. There you have it, my friends. Thank you for taking the time to listen and to learn. I hope you enjoy the program with Wall Thornhill as much as I did.